Welcome to First Thing this Friday morning. I'm Aaron Young with a new face here at the Ticket Desk, Laura Aquino. Welcome. Lovely to be here, Aaron. How are you feeling? Feeling okay. A little bit <laughs> sick. Change of season. Under the weather. Yeah, Under the weather. That to you. I lost my voice last week. It turns out the running a media company, you lose your voice. Yeah. So you talk for a living, hey? Talk. I don't stop talking. In I fact. didn't realize that. Yeah. yeah they brought you on to stop me from talking all the time. I think is how it is. <laughs> but welcome to the team. Of course, here's what you need to know this Friday morning. Workers around the world will walk off the job today. Over 100 major protests are planned across the country to draw attention to climate change. Facebook has partnered with UK's Met Police Service to obtain footage to train its automated content moderation tools. Instagram announcing new policies for promoting certain weight loss products and cosmetic procedures on its platform. And in some cases, the problematic content could be removed entirely. And some news that's come into us this morning, home rental giant Airbnb says its plans to list its shares in 2020 next year, making it one of the most high profile names to tap the stock market over the coming year. Finally, Australian survivor favorite Luke Tocchi has made more than half a million dollars from a GoFundMe page created to support his family after he was eliminated from the show on Monday night. That's what you need to know. Let's get into it. So millions it. of workers around the world <laughs> will walk off the job today and over 100 major protests are planned across Australia today to draw attention to climate change. And I'm trying to draw attention to it too with my green top. <laughs> and I'm trying to get used to having a co-anchor without talking over the top of you. So it's okay, you can talk as much as you like. <laughs> so I very much appreciate Save that. My voice. But more than 2,000 Australian companies have pledged to close their doors or give employees a day off, not here at Ticker though, to attend the climate strike. No days strike. off. Team, no, no days no off. No days off. You've gone green. This was deliberate for the, the protest. Yes, it was deliberate actually. And although I can't march right now, or it's <laughs> happening later today, um, it was very much deliberate. And this is a really, obviously this is a very important issue. It's, it's pressing and it's the arguably the most important part of the ESG equation in environmental social governance. So uh, climate change, you know, is the most pressing issue of, of our generation. Mm. And there's millions of people around the world Do you think businesses are taking it seriously involved. enough? Like we've seen students do it. We've seen a lot of activists over recent years. But now to have about 2,100 Australian companies tell their workers you can either have a long lunch, which I, I would imagine people won't be coming back from yeah, work from. I, I think some of it is a little bit like lipstick climate change, right, uh, the, okay. what they're doing. And also, you know, it is a Friday. Um, it's interesting though, that just a few days ago, the federal government told businesses through the Business Council of Australia, don't get caught up in these social issues. And yet 2,100 businesses telling people, feel free to take the day off or, or you know, have a long lunch. Yeah, well then also in Queensland, you had Anastasia Palaszczuk saying that, that people shouldn't be marching at all. Isn't that bizarre? Getting well, permission, get to, permission do it, to do it, which, which as a just, Labor leader, I think yeah. there were a few feathers ruffled there. Yeah, so I think people aren't really knowing where they stand on these issues. What if you're a business where um, you have you know, a huge number of employees and there are a lot of diverse opinions across the country on, on climate change? there'll be some businesses that there'll be people who just don't want to take the day off who want to carry on because they perhaps don't believe in it a hundred percent and for them are they would they then be worried that this looks bad do they look like a climate denier like it i don't i don't know the mm. answer to that i think it's a positive step in the right direction and we need to be doing more of these things the un climate emergency summit is coming up in yeah, a couple yeah, of days yeah. time so that is why we're marching today yeah um but to really send a message right to, to say to yeah, these world the leaders that better. yeah to say to these world leaders that something needs to be done that this is in fact not just a few fringe players that we do believe in this in fact quite a few of the american news broadcasts nbc nightly news which is the most watched uh, broadcast in the united states actually have this climate emergency climate crisis topic that they bring up every single night i just could not imagine that happening on any of our free to wares in this country that's interesting isn't it mm. i also know that the investment banks in australia they're actually producing research reports on on environmental issues like dedicated to that every month or so yeah. so it's it's not a niche topic no. like this is like i said the most pressing issue of the generation all right well facebook has partnered with the uk's metropolitan police service obtaining footage trying to train its automated content moderation tools starting next month body cam footage taken during police firearms training exercises will be passed on to facebook who will use to train its video recognition ai now obviously this has all come off the back of what happened in christchurch and other incidents as well where you've had a lot of people who've looked towards facebook and said it's one thing to make money from ads for content and i read a story yesterday uh off the auto queue which is where i get all my news from mm. uh, <laughs> what would we do without it 
<laughs> that 90% of Facebook's revenue comes from ads. So they make a lot of their money from this sort of thing. Now they're going to have to start spending money on moderating this huge forum because as we know, a lot of parents on my Facebook um, that I went to school with will say that they put up a photograph of their kid in the bath and it gets taken down, but a man can go and shoot 50 people and it stays up. Yeah, it's, it's quite awful, isn't it? Um, the world we live in in that respect. And I think the other issue is content moderation is key. Content curation is key in this world. So it's not just about producing the right content, but it's about, it's about collating it and curating it in the right kind of way. And the problem with uh, big tech, they're investing in this, but they're probably investing they think that they can get away with potentially having lower level people that yeah. are curating and moderating. And they're so stressed. And can you imagine yeah. the stuff that they're having to witness and it, having to see? It's a big job. Yes. You would hope that they get that sort of support because that would just be horrific. It's a high level job, yeah. Yeah, but we're hearing that that isn't the case at all, that in fact they're having huge turnover, huge amount of stress, huge burnout. There was an article I think in The Wired a couple of months ago just about how difficult it is for these content moderators at Facebook who people are putting stuff up of all sorts of abuse and, and animal abuse and they're having to watch it to determine whether or not it can go out. And often with Facebook, obviously, you're scrolling and the video starts playing straight away. Well, that's so it, yeah. it's very confronting. Yes. And, uh, but yeah, it's interesting so. that they're now working with the Met Police in the UK to use these body cams as a way to essentially teach their AI, their artificial intelligence, because hopefully artificial intelligence can be a way to cut out the human side. No doubt for them it saves a bit of money as well. Mm. But all of the HR nightmare that comes with it, of course, of, of dealing with that too. Yeah, and hopefully, I mean, people will say that AI is coming and it's a threat to our jobs, it's a threat to our society, but hopefully it'll it'll be a positive. And I think it is panning out that way. Over the last year, we've seen a few, few good developments in that. All right. Instagram has announced new policies for promoting certain weight loss products and cosmetic procedures on its platform. And in some cases, the problematic content will be removed entirely. Why'd you look at me just then, just out of interest? The oh, Facebook I don't know. social media <laughs> no reason. and the influencers who use it to do business, of course, controversy for how diet and detox teas and other so-called miraculous weight loss products have actually been promoted. This is a really interesting one that Instagram and Facebook are moving on this because it comes after Instagram removed the likes, the ability to see how many likes you have or how many likes someone else has got. What do you think of this? Do you think that first the likes thing has worked and, and what do you think about the weight loss idea? So I think the likes thing did work and if you ask influencers they will say it worked a little bit too well. They'll say that they've lost their income streams and whatever, what have you. But um, it was a bold move, wasn't it? It was a really bold move. Um, they've rolled it out. So they tested it in certain countries initially, like Australia and Canada. I don't know what the rationale was for testing it in specific countries. Australia does have a lot of influences, however. Um, but I think that this is another this is another step in the right direction, except where do you draw the line on a product being dangerous and how do you determine if the product is dangerous so to start with? Are we imagining there are a whole bunch of testers now at Instagram who have to try these pills and detoxes and figure out if they work or don't work? Yeah, guinea pigs. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> or will it come from basically people who say this didn't work for me, this is a scam? And could that potentially then be competitors who write to Instagram and say this didn't work for me, it's a scam? Yeah, I, I don't know. It's, there's a lot of unknowns with this. And, you know, what one it's pretty person, brave, though, it's, isn't it? It's like very a, brave. But it shows that they really do feel pretty conscious, particularly for younger people, because the idea is that if you're under 18, should you be able to see this? We know that a lot also, of young people, girls, boys as well, have body image problems in their teenage They do, years. but also the problem with this kind of policy is, this regulation is, people sign up to these platforms when they are underage by a long mile. So people might sign up to Instagram at the age of like 15, and they might pretend they're 18, and like, it's all a bit skewed. So even if someone says they're under the age of 18, yeah, I, no, I don't know. 100%. Yeah. 100%, 100%. All right, let's move on from that one now and move on to, well, Airbnb, which this morning has put out some pretty big news on its website. Uh, we find out it plans to list its shares next year, making it one of the most high profile names to tap the stock market in recent years and in fact over the next year. In a short statement, Airbnb didn't give any details on how it plans to list its shares, although it is widely expected to take a direct listing route. 
or route if you're in America. Well, <laughs> wherever you happen to be, but Airbnb <laughs> operates in so many places, including here. Do you use Airbnb? I do use Airbnb. I success or not success? Massive success. Yeah. I went on a trip to the States recently, used Airbnb in two out of three of the places. Right. Um, but you still find great value and you can find great value in hotels now. So yeah. it's interesting. Well, how it kind of has helped, like except that. when you go to New York City where everything costs so much money. I have stayed in some of the worst places in the world where you have to stand on one leg to get one channel on TV in New yeah. York City. Uh, and, and yet you pay what you would be paying for a, an amazing in, place in New York, here. hostels are banned, but they do have rooms that are hostel kind of rooms, <laughs> pod rooms. <laughs> I wasn't in a hostel, I was in a hotel. <laughs> Apparently it was a hotel, it didn't feel like a hotel. I'm that happy you're sure. doing well enough that you can stay in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> was, was. I run my own business now. Yeah, I'm straight well, away back to hostels. <laughs> um, but Airbnb, I mean, they're different to WeWork. At the moment we think of property and, and going, having an IPO, and we think of WeWork, and that has been not exactly Disaster. a Disaster. So uh, the headline I saw was WeWork. WTF. Um, there was a lot of talk around WeWork over the last year. People were saying that you know the founders had these lofty ambitions to. It didn't really make much sense. We grow, we work, we live. Mm. As a co-working business, we work runs very well, but they were trying to do all these ancillary businesses. So I think with Airbnb, it's a little bit different. Airbnb, its main business is still very much its bread and butter. So it's committed to that being its its main business it's yeah business which is home well, see, we work has that we work kind of has that issue which is separate to a lot of these other tech companies number one we work seems to believe that it is a tech company yeah. when really it's a property company it, yeah. that you can organize by phoning up or using and you still have to go in and meet them we met with we work when we we're deciding where to end up and we ended up coming here to ybf we got a better deal uh, they're nicer people we found <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, they were lovely at we work we should say and they were they were really easy people to work with too but i think that the issue is is that uh with um a company like WeWork, if they don't have any customers, they still have to pay money out. Whereas that is not the case if you're an Uber or an Airbnb. So Airbnb might actually have a bit more luck, but in the end, they're just kind of a an app, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are. They are an app. Um, I, I don't know. Airbnb is a is a proven model, and it has been around for quite a while. Um, the founders are phenomenal so people will attest to that all over the all around the world especially in Silicon Valley mm. but also the way that they're doing it I think is smarter so like we said they're trying to they're not wanting to be underwritten by a bank so in WeWork's case they were underwritten by SoftBank and JP Morgan so they're having to incur massive write downs now those big banks and which obviously doesn't look good for the investors. And if it <laughs> no. did, if it did float, or if it does float, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Um, retail investors would incur massive losses too. Yeah. So at least with Airbnb, they're doing it. They're trying to be a little bit more conservative with the way they go about it. Potentially, you could phrase it like that. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing this. Like I personally, I think it, it is a great business. It's one of the best businesses of of our generation. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we'll see how they go. Your turn. <laughs> Australian Survivor favourite Luke Tocchi has made more than half a million dollars from a GoFundMe page created to support his family after he was eliminated from the show on Monday night. The GoFundMe page was set up by a fan of the show and now has raised more money than in fact he would have received had he have won the show when that show apparently ended. I've got to ask you the question. Did you watch Australian Survivor? No, I didn't. Neither did I. Let's move on. No, I, I think it's a, a great thing and it really shows how GoFundMe can be used uh, in, in a great way to help people who he's got two autistic sons. I have an autistic brother. I know how difficult that can be for my mom and for family, but certainly to the idea that uh, he went into this and there was a, another child as well who had cystic fibrosis. Isn't it great to see people come together and say, all right, well, in terms of the game, someone else was the winner, but we're going to help you. Yeah, it is great to see that. And the winner was Pia Miranda, I believe, who I no is an Australian actress so of looking for Al Grandi fame as a, as a young girl growing up. was my favourite Australian movie. <laughs> my TV is always stuck on HDMI 1, so I actually don't get to see free to wear anymore. Oh. Unless it comes up on a streaming app days no, you, later. No, you just watch Ticker. I just watch That's Ticker. Right. Yeah, yes, just watch yes. Ticker. I just have that yeah. theme stuck in my head <laughs> over and over and over, as you will do too. Yes. Now, Laura, we have loved having you on. We're going to cut to our uh, grid camera if we can uh, right now with Jed who's behind the scenes because this is our favorite thing right here this is our liquor cabinet now I know it's a little that, bit early Aaron well because no. we're going to be doing this later in the day you're going to be joining us hopefully for our midday show where we are going to be enjoying a glass of wine when we host a show glass of red okay what sort of red <laughs> 
Literally any red. Any red? Yeah. Okay, well. Not too much red though, because then it makes me a bit, it makes me a little <laughs> sleepy. <laughs> you see, it'll be the end of my day and the start of your day. So that's perfect for me. I'm just going to go home, roll out of here after the show, but we want to have a lot of fun. We very much appreciate you coming and talking to us and hanging out with us here of at Ticker. And we look forward to the future. Uh, and we very much look forward to uh, you watching as well. Enjoy our Twitter videos. Uh, we've got plenty more coming up throughout the day. In fact, I've got an interview coming up in about 20 minutes time with a young entrepreneur, would you believe, who started a business at a very young age. Love speaking to people who come up with these ideas. Mm. I'm 37 and decided to become an entrepreneur. So, you're young. Yeah. I'm Under Ar 40 is young. I'm Aaron Young, in fact. Y yes, you are. Thank Forever you very much. young. <laughs> That's the last time we use that. These are our special cups. We are not sponsored by Starbucks at this stage, but... Sponsor us. <laughs> you're even wearing the green. So very much appreciate Very on brand that. today. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Aaron. And we will, of course, see you soon here on Ticker. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Ticker for more great stories.